Hello and welcome back to Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded the last episode of this of this LP. I explained in my most recent, or one of my most recent community posts that I just needed to take a few days off to to relax, to unwind, because I, uh, I've, been, I've been really stressed out recently, just a lot of things in life happening all at once. Uh, I focused on my effort on, I focused on my spare time effort on getting the the Dragons of 3D video yesterday, which, which went really well, I'm really proud of that, it's probably the best video I've ever made. Uh, but now, I, I've had some time to, to relax and and de-stress, I guess, but, so we're back, ready, uh, right, ready to just dive back into the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Our story so far. The Monetary Express has pulled into the quiet farming village of Dropstone. Upon arriving, it appears that Dropstone is in the midst of celebrating its 50th anniversary. To pass the time, Layton, Luke, and Flora decide to ask around for information on the, for information on the Elysian Box. Great. Okay, well, let's explore the village. Uh, well, I see Granny's House of Puzzles is over there. So, that's interesting. Alright, we- oh, we have a choice. Do we go left, or do we go right? Uh, I mean, I guess- uh, oh, never mind. I, there's my answer! I, I assumed that- I assumed that going backward, then I realized there wasn't- Okay, so going right is where we need to go. I did not mean to talk to you, but I guess I'm talking to you. Well, Mr. Layton, how are you enjoying your time here in Dropstone? It's been delightful. Every once in a while, it's nice to leave the city and enjoy the countryside. The air is so clean and fresh, I'm so jealous of the people who get to live out here! I couldn't have put it better myself. A similar at this place makes you feel like a new man. And with the village celebrating its 50th anniversary today, our timing couldn't be better. Come to think of it, the Morning Today Express turned 50 this year, didn't it? Quite the coincidence. Uh, yes, indeed it did. Sheer coincidence, of course. Uh-huh, top 10 lies ever told. Still, it could have been fun to celebrate your train's anniversary here with the festival. Well, we already have a grand 50th anniversary celebration planned in an exclusive venue in London. Oh, is that so? Well, I'm sure your party will be on par with the excellence of your train. Yeah, oh yeah, the excellence of the train where you run back and forth for an hour trying to find a stupid dog. That was fun, let me tell you. Yes, and on the note, I'm going to have to excuse myself. Good day, Mr. Layton. Good day to you, Mr. Beluga. Great. My, it's already been a year since she passed. Time truly does just fly by. She? Who do you think he was talking about, Professor? I haven't the four years, Luke. I d okay, sure as lucky he just said that out loud. Alright, let's continue our adventure and explore more of the village. Okay, so I guess... Can I, can I move the map at all? I cannot. I was, okay, I, I want to try to see if we can see just how much of the of the village we have left to explore, but... I suppose we cannot do that. Okay. Uh, let's just keep on moving about and see... Wow, look at all the stuff there is to do! I've never been to a real-life festival before, it's wonderful! Oh, that's right, Floor. I've forgotten how you grew up in that one little village. Well, now's your chance to make up for lost time. Let's explore. That's a great idea. Where should we go first? Oh, let's go look at that booth over there. I want to see what they've got. Wait for me. Haha, <laughs> you should watch where you're running or you're liable to crash into something. Oh, great. Here's our favorite person in the world. The Mr. Fly a makeshift plane at us at the end of the last game. But uh, Oh, boy. Okay, I, well, he's back. He's back and ready for more, I suppose. Okay. Uh, well, ooh, another choice. We can go left, right, or down. Well, going down is gonna take us back to where we were, so... Left or right? Hmm. Let's go to the left. See what's over here. Hello! Ooh, a puzzle! Gracious, the weather couldn't be finer for celebrating Dropstone's fancy 50th. My memory's not what it used to be, but you're not from here, are you? Waiting on the train. Hmm. How do I know, you ask? Well, this isn't the first time it's happened. As fancy as that train is, it, it, must, it must be in a rotten shape. Take heart, Sonny. More often than not, the train gets fixed up in a few hours. What with, with the festival and all, there's plenty here I wouldn't see in the meantime. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of puzzles to solve. Thank you for the information. If I could trouble you for a moment, though, I'd like to ask about a medic known as the Elysian Box. Oh, dear me! Uh, um, uh, I mean, oh, dear me, I've never heard of the dreadful thing. Uh, never. Now you here? Hmm. Well, that's enough chatting with strangers for one day. To be frank, I was in high spirits till you came along. Now I'm crabbier than a crab apple. Uh huh. If you really want to prove you're sorry for ruining my day, solve this here puzzle. Sure. Number 37, world's best golfer. A pro golfer has the amazing ability to consistently putt distances of three, five, seven, and eleven feet. Strangely enough, though, those are the only puzzle. Uh, those are the only distances he can putt. Okay. Currently, our golfer stands in the green with his ball 20 feet from the hole. What's the fewest number of strokes he can use to get the ball into the hole? Assume that if the ball is hit farther than the distance remaining to the hole, it will roll up to the other side without going into the cup. Okay. 
Um, well, technically speaking, so is he allowed to put in, is, is he allowed to put not in a straight line? So, I'll, I'll explain it with a, so let's form a triangle. That's, this is not a triangle. That's, that, that, that this is Phineas's head. Hello. Okay, uh, let's, let's delete that. Let's, let's make an actual, I mean, okay, so I, I know, I know the irony of what I said. I said, this isn't, this isn't a triangle, this is Phineas's head. But, like, it's, I was trying to draw a, a more, like, an actual geometric triangle instead of the Phineas head triangle. Uh, whatever, it, whatever, it, it's irrelevant. I, never mind. Okay, so, the point here is that, um, if he's only allowed to put in a straight line, then what we can do is we can break it up into three sections, which are three, three, and eleven, because obviously three plus three is nine, nine plus eleven is twenty, and there's your, there's your hole. However, uh, if he's allowed to putt diagonally and form a triangle shape, then he will be able to putt half the distance, um, with, with a single stroke. So, in this case, what he, like, assuming he's allowed to do this, which, I mean, the puzzle doesn't say anything about him not being allowed to do it, so what, what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say he, he can put 11 this way and 11 that way. Um, and then that should cover half the distance in each direction. So let's, let's see, let's, let's see if my logic works, it works out here. This should do the trick. It did not. Oh, my. Oh right, I okay. I, I you know I forgot. I, I I need to. I no no don't don't view a hint. I I put I put the wrong. That's okay. So, um, my logic may still be correct. I, I put in the 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 distance to the hole itself, not the number of times he needs to hit the thing. I I gave the wrong answer. Is this gonna work? Okay. So my logic was correct. I just gave the wrong answer. Okay. So. Uh, from friend plus two dragons which shown above, he can see the ball two shots. No one ever said they had to punch directly toward the hole, did they? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, my logic was correct, I just, the reason, so the reason why I put 11 instead of 2 is because I was, like, I, I thought, I thought, I, 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 I was putting the distance of the actual shot itself and not the, I don't know why I had, I don't know why I thought that, because I, I read the question, I, I, I guess, I, I guess I was just so cut off my logic, and I, I saw two, two answer slots instead of one, so I just, I, I just put that by default, I don't know, but my, my logic holds up, I knew, I knew what the solution was, I just didn't, I just put the wrong answer down. That stick is very nice. You got a good head on those shoulders, Sonny. But I guess you need a, and I guess, I guess you need one to pull off that hat. Puzzle two seven is now in your puzzle index. Okay. Well, let's head back out. And okay, so are we by ourselves now? And Luke and Floor just ran off by the on their own, I guess. I don't know. Well, let's see what's over in this direction. Uh, we have you. You also have a puzzle for us. Hey there, fella. I'm in real bind here. Help an old gal out, would you? What seems to be the problem, madam? My sweet little bird fell down a hole in the ground here. I want to help the poor thing, but I just can't reach her. Do you have any ideas? I believe there's something we can try. Puzzle number 36, the trapped bird. Oh no, Laurel's poor little bird has fallen down a long, winding hole in the ground. In front of the bird are three paths labeled A, B, and C. Which tunnel should the bird take in order to make it back above ground? Okay, um... This looks like a nightmare. Alright, so... Let's just start drawing. Uh... So, if we've... I guess we can just trace the path, right? Uh, just trace this back to see which direction it goes in. Uh, this goes... Okay, so we have a we have a break in the path, so we'll start going this way. Uh, and this... Wait, that just doubles... I, I, I must have something up. Okay. Uh... Oh, oh, there's another way I can go right here. Oh, okay, so B. So, so B, we'll take us here, which takes us here, which takes us all the way around here, and to the exit. Okay. So, I, 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 got, I got lost for a second. So, B. And now to test my theory. Yep, perfect. All right. And there we have it. Nice and easy. Very nice. Working safely, escape her underground confines by following tunnel B. Any other tunnel will lead her deeper in underground into or into the mouth of a very hungry snake. Puzzle six. Now your puzzle index. Okay, so they are still. I thought I thought they might have run off on their own. There's my little birdie. I was worried she'd be stuck down there forever. I wish I had some way of thanking you properly. Oh, I know. Here, you can have this tea set and these lovely herbs. Take them. I insist. The tea set minigame is going to add to the trunk. Okay. You got the you got the ingredient Oasis Leaf. Use it to create tea blends. Okay. Sure. Yep. All right then. To access the tea set, touch the trunk. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, I'm not. I. 
since I now know that the reward for solving these things is just going to be unlocking more puzzles in the post game, I'm not going to bother with them. Uh, we'll, we'll just make sure to, to solve lots of puzzles in the main playthrough. Alright, well, well, that's about... Oh, we can go up now. Okay, so so solving solving those two puzzles was the gateway for, me, for being able to access the rest of the village, I guess. Alright, let's keep moving on. Moving upward and onward. Look at all these booths. Now this is what I call a festival. Oh, I just love all the hustle bustle. It's so wonderful. Shall we walk around and take in more of the sights, then? Definitely! Oh, I forgot about this. The Professor Luke and Florida had to check out the plaza in front of the town hall. My favorite. Okay, hello friends. Do you have puzzles to solve? You do not have a puzzle for us. Oh, boo hoo hoo. Parting with one so dear to your heart is even more painful than the tightest wig. When she was a child, I used to read her until she fell asleep. She looked just like an angel. Oh, nothing hurts so much as... Separation's knife. Do you ever know about that? I guess I've never really given it much thought. Oh, friend, not. I wasn't expecting one as young as yourself to fully understand a pain such as mine. Don't mind me, I'll just excuse myself now. The way he was carrying on, you think he just got dumped. But he seemed to start in a different way, didn't he? Best not to pry too deeply into the private affairs of others, Luke. It's not becoming of a gentleman. You're right, Professor. Okay. So, so that guy didn't have a puzzle for us. That guy was too busy mourning the loss of the, of the person who died a year ago, or whatever they were talking about at the beginning of the episode. But this guy has a puzzle for us. Hey, fellers. Pleasure to meet you. My name's Albert, and I am just nuts about our beautiful village. Are you now? Uh, I ain't even running around jobs and asking questions, but you haven't talked to me yet. I, uh, sa saving the best for last, you know? Something like that, I don't know. Okay. Uh... If you solve this puzzle, the king of dropstone trivia, yours truly, will answer a question for you. Okay. Whoa. Number 53, Boys Club. Uh-huh. Below is a wheel of male and female portraits. Select a portrait and counting that po portrait as one. Move six portraits either clockwise or counterclockwise. Then cross out the last of these six portraits. Repeat this pattern starting from the next available portrait and moving in the same direction. If you start at just the right portrait, you can remove all the women in the wheel. What? Leaving only the six portraits of men behind. Circle this portrait. Remember, you can... What? I have to do what now? What? Let me make sure I got this. Let me read that again. If you start at just the right portrait, you can remove all the women in the re in the wheel, leaving only the six portraits of men behind. Circle this portrait. Br what? How the? How in the actual hell am I supposed to? I'm I'm using a hint. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. I I I don't have time. I don't I don't have the time in my life to sit here for two hours, painstakingly going through each individual portrait one at a time trying to find because because what the game wants me to do here is pick a random portrait I, I i'll choose you as i said i'll i'll choose you and then go one right it's uh move six portraits in the caucus so we'll go one two three four five six and then cross out the last one and or do the opposite and go one one and just i don't have time to do that for every single one until I until I get the right answer. I just don't. So no thanks, game. I'll take a hint. The first portrait you should choose. The, the, the first portrait you should choose. You should you choose should be of a man. That. Uh. The things I also don't. I I don't even know. I just, there's so many layers of I don't know where to start with this puzzle that I don't even. Ironically. There's so many ways I don't know. Of, of, I don't know where to start. That I don't even know where to start explaining how I don't know. It's, it's the stupid destiny line. It's like I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. It, unironically, that I don't have. I, I. In fact, you know what? I, it's like that, that. That's not gonna be enough. I don't think because I. That, that still gives me so many choices to start from or places to start from. So I, I need another hint coin. Move counterclockwise to find your answer. Okay, that makes it. So that makes it easier because that means that means now 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 I, now I only have to try six of these in one direction. So that makes this easier. So, uh, so I need to leave only the men remaining. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it can't be that because that eliminates one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't be that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Could be that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't be that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so sir, currently you, you and you are current choices. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's either late. I just said Layton. It's either Luke. Or this guy so well I guess we'll just keep the we'll keep the train moving in this one so uh one two three four five six that gets rid of you uh 
One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. That, that, wait, okay. So, uh, read this pattern starting from the next available portrait moving in the same direction. Okay. So, this, this, that, that actually doesn't work. Because if we move. Oh, no, okay, sorry, no, starting from the next available portrait. Okay, so start, start here. I think we found our answer. I think it, I think it, I think it's that guy. Let me just make my circle a little bit clearer. Consider this puzzle solved. Okay, screw that puzzle to infinity and beyond. Leaves no oh puzzle God. unsolved. Could you imagine how long I would have had to sit there if I actually had to do that with no hints? Jesus Christ. Okay, this is why I save my hint coins, people, because I need to save them for the bullshit puzzles like that. Very nice. Yeah, great. Yeah, you'll eventually remove them all. Jesus Christ. Expertly solved. Oh, it gave me chills. It really did. Okay, ask away. If you've got any questions about the village or its history, I'm your man. The tribe didn't know anything about a supposedly cursed antique called the Elysian Box. Hmm. Time to leave, but you've got you've gone beyond my area of expertise. I've never heard of the thing. So I wasted my time then? Great. What I can tell you is that the people in this town jump at the very mention of curses. But what I gather, it seems they have some connection to the village in the days of its founding. Unfortunately, that's all the info I can really give you on that subject. So I'd let you down. Great. What a colossal waste of my time. Okay, are there any... I, I need I need to start looking for more hint coins so I can actually... Oh, hint coin right there. Oh, that's... I wanted a hint coin out of puzzle, but okay. Uh, look at this little monument here, Professor. It appears to be commemorating something. I never take a closer look. Number 30, the secret message. On the day Dropson was founded 50 years ago, the villagers toasted with red wine and danced late into the night. They also built the statue and engraved it with the word red and the date 812. Part of the statue is shaped like a wine glass and can be filled with water from the spout at the top. While the statue deserves, uh, sorry, while the, while the statue describes the villagers' activities on the day of the founding, it can also show where they all found themselves the day after the, the, the festivities. Can you figure out where the villagers were? Answer in three letters. Oh! Oh, that's clever! That's actually really clever! Okay, so, the water comes out here, and then it fills in the fountain right here, and if it fills it up to around this point, then the water would form a reflection, and if, if, and if we reflect the top part of R onto the bottom part, it forms a B. And because it's the day after the festivities, it makes sense that they would be in bed, right? This should do the trick. Yeah, there we go. See, that's what you can do when you have clever puzzles. They require you to think a little bit, a little bit of brain teasers, not go counterclockwise a bunch of thousands of times until you eventually find the right portrait to start with. Anyway. Brilliant! Fill, uh, filling the wine glass part of the monument with water creates a reflection of the, uh, that transforms the engraving of 812 red to 813 bed. Everyone must have stayed up so late celebrating the new village of Dropstone that they couldn't wait get up on time the next morning. According to the writing here, this village was founded by its first settler 50 years ago. It's strange how 50 years is a long time for a person, but not much time at all for a village. Quite so. But this fact just invites more questions. Why did this founder come here in the first place? It's hard to believe he or she should be set forth from their own residence to find a new village. Puzzle 30 is now in your puzzle index. Okay. Great. Are there any other hint coins? That's another... Trying to find hint coins here, people, not puzzles. This building appears to be the town hall. Yes, but it looks like it's closed for the day. Man, they probably wanted to give everyone a chance to enjoy today's festivities. Luke, this reminds me of a puzzle set in front of a town hall like this one. Care to give it a go? Would I ever? Uh, Alright, number 47, the mayoral, the mayoral election. Three people at odds with one another are running for mayor in the upcoming town election. Including these three candidates, the town has a voter population of 40 people. In order to win, a candidate must get more votes than any other candidate. If each of the 40 voters casts a single vote and every vote is recognized, what is the fewest number of votes a candidate needs to secure victory with certainly 20? That's, that, that, that's easy. That, that's easy math. Okay, this, so, so if we split the votes, uh, into two groups, we have 20 and 20. Uh, now all we need to do is just, no, don't delete all. Uh, cause 50, uh, so I just said 50. 50% 50 of, of the 40 would be 20. So now all we need to do to, to tip the scales in his favor, or his or her favor, would be to have it such that one of the three people casts a vote for the third person, and then... The other 19 still vote for one candidate, so we'll call these candidates A, B, and C. Candidate A gets 20 votes, candidate B gets 19 votes, and then the last candidate gets only a single vote. Uh, so all you, this is, that's the fewest number that you need to secure your victory as mayor. Hmm, let's see if this works. Simple math. Piece of cake. That's right. 
The winner has to have at least 20 votes for a certain victory. Since each of the candidates dislikes the other two, each will likely vote for themselves. 40 votes minus those three votes leads 37 votes. The winner will need over half the votes, in this case, a minimum of 19 additional votes. As adding the winning candidate's personal vote to that, you get, you, uh, you get 20 votes, even if another candidate gathered all the remaining each votes wouldn't be enough to overcome the candidate with 20 votes. They're done. Now we really should get back to the scheme of the town. I mean, I, I, I'm just try I was just trying to find hint coins, and I, keep, I kept finding puzzles instead, so... Clearly this wasn't working. Uh, are there any... No, I didn't want to look at the... Nope, I didn't want to look at the end. Okay. Uh, let's just keep searching, I guess. No? Wow, look at those gigantic cow balloons! Looks like the villagers are setting up for the livestock competition. Livestock competition? That sounds like fun! Yes, I'd certainly like to see the competition myself, but it doesn't appear quite ready to start yet. Oh, wait, can we go see more of the village? Certainly. We can return later when the competition commences. Yay! The professor, Luke, and Flora decide to walk around until the live competition or the livestock competition starts. Okay, sure thing. Are there any hit coins here? No, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Nope. I did, uh, are there any hit coins here that we can find? Nope. That's that's a thing. Okay. Hit coins. Hit coins. Come out to play. Nope. No hit coins. Okay. Great. Let's. I, I don't want to run out of hit coins. Uh, all right. Path to the farm. All right. Do you have a puzzle for us to solve? No, you don't. I never forget a face, and I don't know any of yours. You must be from the Military Express. Security Town, let me clue you into a, cute, a few key facts from Dro Dropstone. No, oh, you're interested, so don't act all bashful and reserved on my account. Listen, if you know one name in Dropstone, make sure it's Mr. Anderson's. Not only is the fellow swimming in money, he pretty much runs Dropstone, but he's a slow guy who treats everyone with respect, even the mailman. That'd be me, by the way. I always say you can tell the heck of a lot of people about the, uh, about, about the way they treat the local mail carrier, but even nice guys like him have troubles. I hear he spends all his time fretting about his daughter. That reminds me, I just saw a pair of unusual characters head up toward Mr. Anderson's house. The two said they were uh, police from London, but something about they, something about them seemed downright fishy. The two people, huh? Are you referring to Inspector Kemley and his assistant? Kemley, you say? That sounds right. So he said he had official police business. Said he needed to see Mr. Anderson. What possible connection could there be between Mr. Anderson and Eugene Box? But it seems that Mr. Anderson serves the head of this community. It's very natural that he know about who and what passes through this area. He's a big fish, all right. You're right on the money about that. Heck, even the owner of the Monetary Express helps him to pay him a visit when he's in town. Yes, I bet those two officers are being waited on like kings at Mr. Anderson's this week. But enough chit chat. We got a festival going on now, so go have some fun. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. We, we're, we're gonna go pursue. Oh, look at that cute little store. Do we have time to take a peek inside? I can't see the hall, but it's, it's gonna look, shall we? We're gonna, oh wait, you wanna go inside the, okay, fine, we'll go inside the store. Oh, that's creepy cat. That, that there would be a creepy cat. Okay, do you have a puzzle for us? Greetings, I don't think I've seen you around these parts before, but ask your name. Of course, I'm Hersher Layton, professor of archaeology at Grissom Heller University. Sean, sir. Welcome to Jobstone, Professor Layton. My, my name is Dorothy, and I am a maid at the service of the Addison family. Tell me, what brings you to our humble village? My, co my companions and I are after an artifact known as the Elysian Box. Have you heard of it before? Ahem. <clears throat> Can't say that I have. Uh, but the Master is quite knowledgeable about curiosities such as that. Master, madam? Oh, yes. Excuse my thoughtlessness. I keep forgetting you're new here. Eventually, there's not a single resident of our village who doesn't know Mr. Anderson. I see. If it's at all possible. We'd very much like to meet Mr. Anderson. No one say he'd be glad to receive you, but lately he's been preoccupied with his daughter. I didn't mean to pry, but has there been some issue between Mr. Anderson and his daughter? Well, yes, just between you and me and the wall. His daughter has been secretly planning a trip alone. Secretly planning a trip alone? Is that your way of saying she's planning to run away? Um, yes. And what's worse is that the master is starting to catch on that something is going on. But after much talk, we servants have decided that she only see the master's young daughter off. Oh, wow, this... Conditions must be real bad at home if your own if your own servants are like, yeah, you should probably run away. He, this guy's this your your dad's kind of an abusive piece of trash. We will happily support your endeavor to get away. Like first off, good good on the maids or uh, sorry the, uh, the servants for being like, yeah, your conditions are kind of shitty right here. We support your decision to go leave. Well, well uh, but the, the, Mr. Anderson seems like a real sack of shit if it's that bad. Like Jesus. So you in support of allowing this girl to go off on her? Why is that? Because her recent trip was to fill the last quest of the young ladies. Oh, no, never mind. Here, here I was thinking they were, they were, that they were be like, hey, uh, clearly, your, you, clearly your dad's being abusive or whatever. So let's, let, let, let's, let's help you get away from, from this, from this psychopath. Uh, we'll, 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 don't worry, we'll, we'll help you in your, in, in your, in your plan to run away. Uh, it's, it's not that. It's that her late grandmother wants her to run away, which, 
Okay then. I see. May I inquire as to what that last request was? Well, I myself have only heard scraps since the story from other people, so I can't say much. Whatever the request is, one that the young mistress seems to feel is extremely important. Oh, excuse me, look at that! Here I am, gossiping away when there's supper to prepare. Could you excuse me, Professor Layton? I need to get back to work. Oh, before you go! Perhaps she's gone! Maybe it's me, but it sounds like Mr. Mellison's daughter is leaving home more, um, more than giving on a trip. And yet, for some reason, the servants are cheering her on. How odd. Yes, very. I think about the consequences should Mr. Allison find out what's been going on. Servants must have a tricky solid reason if they resolve to keep a secret like this. What could it possibly be? I'm, I'm getting this feeling drops on this that's all never as it looks. I'm not the only one, Duke. But enough speculation. Let's go to more with the village. Okay, Professor. Can we go where I wanted to go now, which is towards Anderson's house? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, so we can go to the right, uh, out to the lake. Wow, look at the size of that mansion, I bet you get lost in there. It's impressive to say at least. I'm sure that massive manor belongs to Mr. Anderson. So that's where Inspector Kennedy and his assistant went, right? I'd like to see this place myself, can we go take a look? No, for now I think our best course of action is to gather what information we can in the village. Uh, uh besides, I imagine the Andersons have their hands full with the two guests they can already have. Okay. Do we have any hint coins? Uh, hint coin in the tree. Hint coin in the chimney. Uh, that's a puzzle. Ah! Yeah! Here! That should do it. By the way, if you're wondering what, what this noise is, it's my iPad keep, that keeps falling over because the stand... I have to have I have to have the iPad up, uh, I like, turn it on its side to play it on the iPad because it's, it's, it displays in, in a portrait mode, not landscape mode. But the problem is that the, the it, it's not as sturdy because it, it, it's it's at a much steeper angle when it's like that, so it, it's it's more easy to knock over because uh, it's it's not it, it doesn't have as what what because it, it's it's the thinner side uh, like obviously when, when it's when when it's in portrait mode it's it's on the thinner side instead of it being in landscape mode so it's not as it, it doesn't have as much support at the base so it's easier to to knock over so I apologize if you keep hearing that but uh, and I and and you may be saying oh just hold it then the problem is that I don't want to keep like I don't want to crane my neck down like this. To, to play the the game, uh, and I also don't want to hold it up in front of the microphone like this, so it's just I, I just hold up on the stand. Anyway, uh, oh, I'm just doing a little fishing in this here lake. Sounds like a lot of work. Have you had much luck? Actually, that's a good question. Now that I think about it, how many have I managed to catch today? Let's solve a puzzle and figure it out. You've you've cast a large net out in the in a pond to catch some fish. Uh, every part of the net is in the water except for the two ends, which you're holding in your hands, as shown below. The pond's surface is small, but it's actually wider underwater, so parts of your sunken net aren't visible from the surface. Assuming that there are no tears in the net and its rim is constructed of a single length of, uh, of rope that ends on the shore, how many of the fish visible in the pond will you snare when you pull the net back up? Okay. This... this is pretty similar to one of the ones from the first game. Uh... So... Okay, uh... Let's, 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 let's try to trace... Cause it, cause it goes offshore a little bit, so let's, let's try to trace... Let's try to complete the, uh, complete the, the net, as it were. Let's do this and just connect the, connect it together, and then, and then from there, it shouldn't be too hard to piece together what's inside this thing. So this should be, should be pretty easy once we actually get it all connected up like this. Okay, so, now we just count all the fish that are in here. So there's, there's one here, uh, two, three, uh, four... Five, six, seven, and I believe that's it. So I think there's seven here. I, I might, there might be a couple obscured by my lines, but I think that's it. Hmm. Let's see if this works. All right, we got it. Nice. That was almost too easy. Luke has gotten very arrogant since the first game. Look at all tonight. Feast like a king. Okay then. Uh, is there anywhere left we have? Oh, hey, Inspector Kelmley. Nice to, uh, nice seeing you here. Hey, what's Inspector Kelmley? Well, look who it is. Hello, ins hello, Inspector. Are you watching for the Allison Estate? <laughs> I don't know where you get your information, Lee, but you're a sly as a fox. As a matter of fact, I was just there, but the servant said Mr. Anderson himself wasn't home. Said so the bloke is off presiding over some livestock competition. Likely story, I'm sure. I'm curious, what connection do you see between Mr. Anderson and the case you're investigating? Now that's any of your business. Perhaps you can be of help. I've heard rumors the bloke had tried to find a Silesian box in the past, so I went to talk to him. But when I got to the house, his butler told me he wasn't home and that I should leave. Can you believe it? I bet you were you were tenor, he was just pretending to be out. I went out of my way to see the man, just so he could do his offer me a proper cup of coffee. 
but one of them is going to be interested in the box in the first place. It's if he wants to get to Duke, he won't know more to be the same person. I guess I'd better head over to the last competition that Mr. Allison is judging. Fine, let the blasted bloke judge his precious livestock condition then. I won't be there. As far as I'm concerned, this whole thing's a frivolous distraction for the rich. Speaking of which, I can only assume his obsession with the box stems from the excess of time and money on his hands. If you see anything that might help this investigation, report it to me straight away, you hear? We are always having to cooperate, Inspector. Now please excuse us. Sure, off you go. Come along, Barton. We have work to do. Hmm? Oh, yoki, sir. Oh, I'd better head back to the competition grounds. Okay, so, to the livestock competition, away! We've, we've done enough wandering for the day, so let's go ahead and head all the way over here. My goodness, look at this place! Phew, we made it back in time to catch the competition! If we've been informed correctly, Mr. Anderson is judging the entries. So we should be somewhere around here, right? In indeed, I wonder which of the gentlemen walking around here is our man. I agree, so the two men over there are getting pretty hot on the collar about something. I wonder what the matter is. Well, let's talk to him and find out. Just look at that mangy coat. You know what you guys can see? That's no bovine of mine. I know what's going down here. Someone swapped out my cow for this lemon. What? Well, what do you want me to draw about? Can you at least point out which cow is yours? Now, how do you expect me to do that? Oh, brother, this is gonna get ugly. What's this be the problem, sis? This fellow here seems convinced that someone swapped out his prize cow for another. What? Why? 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 Okay, I'm telling you that, no cow of mine. I got what's perfect from horns to tail. See what I mean? There's just no reasoning with him. I can't start the contest with him carrying on, but I don't know how we can clear up the situation. I'll take care of this. I bet the cows would know if any monkey business went on. Of course, why don't I think of that myself? I'll leave this one to you, Luke. Um, excuse me, miss. Can you help us out here? Moo. I see. Moo, moo, moo. We're talking to the cows. Did you find anything of use? I sure did. That was some other conversation to get something like this. What? You actually got information from the cows? What? Okay. That's a new one. Puzzle number 50. Misinformation. Yep. All right. Five cows are grazing at the festival. Two of them are true moo cows, a breed that only tells the truth. Oh, uh, of course. The other three are no way cows, a different variety that always tells lies. Using the following statements from each cow, mark all the no way cows. Tab a letter to mark the cow below it. D is a no way, I promise. Oh no, C isn't a true moo cow. A ain't a no way cow, no way. Okay, well, C's obviously a no way cow because literally just said no way so if that's true then that means that a is indeed a no way cow which means that D isn't a no way cow uh, which means that a C and E are the okay so, so that, that's that's easy then because because that so C C uh, we'll, 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 we'll mark them with L's uh, L's and T's to indicate which ones are telling the truth and which ones are lying so if a is telling the truth uh, Sorry, sorry, uh, never mind, sorry, I, I, I messed up. So if, if, I did not mean to draw that, okay, so, C is lying and A is lying, which means that D isn't lying, which means that, um, E is also lying, and there's our three right there. Right? Uh, tab letter to mark the cow below it, mark all the no-way cows. That should be E, that should be A, C, and E. I think? Did I jump to a conclusion here? Am I correct? Got it, okay. Correct. Piece of cake. Yes, indeed. That's right. I can't believe we got the information by talking to cows, but all right. Looks like these two ladies swap it as well waiting for the competition to start. It should be all sorted out now, though. Oh, you betcha. Look at that bill of that lustrous coat. That's soulful gaze. That's my cow, no doubt. So everything's okay about you. Better, better, better than okay, kid. My darling back, I'm a shoe in for that blue ribbon. Thanks. Wow, Luke, you sure have a way with animals. Oh, it's nothing, really. Look over here, you two. They're about to announce the winner. And the winner of this year's Dropstone Dairy Crown is... Oscar, she's selling milk, Maven. Mutilda! Mutilda? Hold on now, you mean to tell me my sweet Maramu didn't take my didn't take first place? That's why you swapped your cow back, Clamber. If you kept quiet, you'd be the winner, eh? 
I was robbed! The counters must have been rigged. Rigged, I tell you! To think he went to all that trouble to get his car back, then ended up using because of it. Yes, I suppose he goes to show that things would like to know as good as planned. What you are, Professor? Say, shouldn't Mr. Anderson be around here now? It's going to take some effort to find him in a crowd this days. Let's look around a bit. Okay. That... I... I, I don't even... I... What? What did we just solve? Okay. Uh, so I, I'm still look, I'm still looking around for hint coins. So that's just I keep finding puzzles. Ever hear the old saying, "The clothes make the man." Well, from the look at your duds, I'd say you've got your act together. So try this puzzle on for size. Sure. Why not? Puzzle number thirty-nine: A change of clothes. Men A, B, and C each started off with pants and shirts of a single color. A wore red, B wore blue, and C wore white. They, then they, they were blindfolded and swapped items of clothing. After they took off their blindfolds, here's what they said. A. No one's shirt and pants match. B. It looks like C is the only one of us who didn't keep any of his original clothes. C. I don't know if I like these red pants. Okay. Change the clothing by tapping on them and assembling their... Okay, so this this should be easy. So we know that you're wearing red pants. That's a, that's a good start place. And if you're, and if you're not wearing... You, you can't be wearing this, which means you're wearing this. Which means that we have to give each of your pieces of clothes to the other people. Uh, and the only choices there are either to give, uh, either to give you, um, the, these pants and the blue shirt, or, and then you, the, or I guess the, the, the red shirt, but that doesn't, so, you, uh, the, he can't be wearing the blue pants, and you can't be wearing the blue shirt, because those are already been given to other people, which means it has to be, like, the, uh, there's these, uh, uh, Man C already has the blue shirt and the red pants. Which means the options we have to be- we have to use the red shirt and the blue pants, which means that you have to take the pants, you have to take the shirt. Right? This should do the trick. Yeah. Okay, that one was nice and huh. easy. Wonderful. Simple logical deductions. Nicely done. Something tackier than when your shirt and pants don't match is fashion rule number one. Well, number two, no one can pull off sequins. But with that switch suit of yours, you're golden. The swanky nightclub will turn you away, I guarantee it. Okay, I was trying to find hint coins. Are there any? No, I didn't want to talk to you again. Okay, so you don't have a hint coin. Great. How about anyone else? No hint coins? No hint coins. Alright, let's. I guess it's time to head out then. I guess we never did manage to meet Mr. Allison, did we? Yes, what a pity. I had a feeling he'd provide us with a lead on the Legion box. Hey there, fellers! We never met before, have we? I heard you chatting about Mr. Anderson and I thought to myself, Hey, I can help! Here, I'll point him out. Puzzle number 48, who's Mr. Anderson? I just saw Mr. Anderson around here a minute ago. He shouldn't be too hard to spot yet, uh, with that beard and hat. He's a real gentleman, he always looks spiffy with his canine and that dapper little bow tie. Oh, he doesn't wear glasses in case you were wondering. Uh, look, there he is now. Okay. So. He doesn't wear glasses, which means it's not you. Uh... That's... Literally, it's that everyone else is wearing glasses, or sorry, isn't wearing glasses, okay. Um, so he has a cane, you don't have a cane. Uh, you don't have a cane. You don't have a cane. And you don't have a cane. So that, le that's, that, that narrows it down to four people. Uh, cane, bow tie, okay. You don't have a bow tie, that's good. Beard, you don't have a beard, and you don't have a beard. Which means it can only be you. So we'll circle you. Consider this puzzle solved. That was just process elimination, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful indeed. Nice and simple. Okay. Well, we found him. Good day, sir. What should be Mr. Anderson? The one and only, my friend, and whom do I have the pleasure to be speaking with? The name is Hishimaton. My friends and I have come to this fine town in search of the Elysian Box. I thought a man of influence such as yourself might be able to offer us some direction. The Elysian Box, you say? Why would you want to go chasing after a thing like that? So you're familiar with it, then? Familiar? No. But I do believe my dear mother once searched after the very box you speak of. Interesting. Please, elaborate. Ah, well, my birth mother died when I was very young. The mother I speak of is actually my mother-in-law, Sophia. She's found in this village way back when. The kind of soul I never met. Sharp, too. I married into her family, but she treated me like her own flesh and blood. Seeing as how I never knew my own mother, I thought it would be fair to call Sophia my real mother. Even after my wife passed on, Sophia continued to treat me as one of her own. Mother Sophia looked high and low for that box, but she never did find what she was looking for. So she made efforts of her own to search for it. Fascinating. Tell me, where might Sophia be now? She. 
she left us last year. In her last day, she spent a lot of time held up in her room writing. So, so the girl that uh, that's trying to leave is, it wants to go find the, the Elysian box then. Great. Good to know. That's, they, at least that's one mystery solved. I see. I'm slow for your loss. Thank you. Well, my mother may have had knowledge of the subject, but she's gone now. now. You know as much as I do. I regret that I couldn't be more help to you, sir. Well done, all, Mr. Anderson. I've learned a great deal from our conversation. You have my thanks. Uh, one more thing before you go, Mr. Layton. Let's take a look around you. These picturesque hills, these happy people, Dropstone has been blessed with so much. Sophia turned this place from nothing into a village full of warmth and camaraderie. Dropstone mustn't ever be allowed to wither and fade like so many other villages. After all, too many sacrifices were made to make this place what it is. Ah, forgive my ramblings. Once I start talking, sometimes I have trouble stopping. Enjoy your time in Dropstone, and be well. Good day. Hmm, I guess that's another dead end lead. Yeah, I wouldn't say that, Duke. The place's village is inextricably linked with the Elysian box. I also find Mr. Anderson's choice of words interesting. What do you suppose he meant by sacrifices? Looks like my mystery only leads to more mysteries. Well, we solved one major mystery at least. We know that the daughter was trying to find the Elysian box. So, that's something at least. Okay, well, I guess now it's time to head on out of here. Uh, Alright, well, so we're, we're trying to... So I, I guess that's our adventures in the town completed. So let's head on back to... Uh, uh, I guess, uh, before we leave, are there any hint coins here for us? I didn't want to... No, I, I didn't want to... I don't care. I, I want to find hint coins. No, I don't. No, no, no. I'm trying to... I just want... No, I, I, no, I want... Oh, wait, oh, wait. This is a long conversation. This might actually be story details. Luke, perhaps we should leave him be. Sometimes it's just not too much if you've had this. If he doesn't want us to come on, maybe he shouldn't be thinking out loud. Or maybe... Maybe that wasn't re important, because it was over. Maybe it was stopped. Okay, so... Uh, no hint coins. Great. Still nothing. Okay, good to know. Uh, is there anything else that we haven't done yet? Uh, you're new. Okay, so can we not maybe maybe can we, if we talk to you now, can we? Are you, will you tell will you tell us more about the uh, the what's it, uh, the, the 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 running away scheme? Because I think we know why they're doing it, or I, I think I know why she's running away. But yeah, I forgot to get out for tonight's meal. See, that reminds me puzzle I want her. Would you care to hear it, sir? Well, I, if, even if I said no, I, I was gonna have to solve it anyway. Johnny and Thomas were each carrying some apples. If Johnny gave Thomas one apple, the two men would each have the same number of apples. Conversely, if Thomas gave Johnny two apples, then Johnny would have three times the number of apples that Thomas would have. So just how many of apples is each of the men holding? Okay, so... If that's true... So Johnny has two more apples than Thomas, then. So, like, if, if we... For instance, if we take... If we take five here... Uh... And then we have... Three over here... We, we, we take one of Johnny's and give it to Thomas... Then now they both have the same amount, so uh, whatever that whatever the case may be, we know we know that that's for sure. So the, the difference between the two of them is is it, it, it's their, their their apple counts are a difference of two, and if we so by that logic, if if the if the initial difference between the two of them is two, and the new difference is is three times that, then the difference between their values has to be six. Oh, okay, I got it. Okay, so. I'm guessing the episode is going to be 9, because whether you multiply 3 by 2, or you just add 6 to, uh, to 3, you'll get the same here. So now, with that in mind, we now know that the base number has to be 3 of, um, of, uh, of Thomas' apple count. So, Thomas' apple count has to start at as 5, because I said, can I, can, can the game let me draw please? Thank you. Okay, let's undo that. So, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, which means, and then Johnny's has to start at a 7, because th this holds up, uh, true with the other one, because if we, if we take one, if we take one from Johnny and give it to Thomas, they both have 6, or if we take two from Thomas and give it to Johnny, then now it's both multiplied by 3, uh, well, the, the difference multiplied by three, then that gives us a situation where Johnny has three times the number of apples as Thomas. So Johnny has seven apples, and uh, Thomas has five apples. Boom. Consider this puzzle solved. It took me longer than it probably should have, but we still got the answer. Nice. I see, that's alright, so where are you be heading next, Professor Layton? Once our training is once our training's in working order, we'll move on to the next town. Oh, then I expect you run into the young mistress. She's leaving on the voluntary express today. She's above into her. Do say hello. Oh, and remember, please keep Miss Caddy's trip a secret from the er, uh, from the master. Okay. 
Great to know. This cat is freaking me out, by the way. Oh, wait, actually, there's a puzzle in the cat. This cat sculpture, this cat sculpture is certainly expressive. That piece of keen one. If you like cats, Pesa, I've got a puzzle for you. Puzzle number 51, flipped cats. One of these, one of the three color pictures, A, B, or C, is the same picture as the black and white one displayed on the far left. Can you find which one? The only difference is that the picture on the far left has had its contents flipped left to right and its colors inverted and changed to black and white. Oh, great. Sounds like fun. Okay. So, this... Hmm. So, the easy way for me to do this would be to just eliminate, just, just find differences between A, B, and C. And then look for those different, look for which ones carry over into the, the picture on the left. So, for instance, uh, the, the background line right here is way too thin for it to match up with this. So, it's not gonna be C, we know that for sure, that, that makes it, that makes this easy. Uh, what else is there? Also, also the eyebrows. The third eyebrow on the side is long here. And it's long here, but it's not long here, which means that it has to be B. Consider this puzzle I solved. I think. Perfect. Correct. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Good eye. B's what you're looking for. It must make it look so easy. Puzzle 31 is now in your puzzle index. Okay. Uh, let's. I think that's enough for now. We we stop by here. Now it's time to head back to the train station. I I want to try to see if we can talk to her about the. The, the the one who's running away, and we did. Uh, we got a little bit of information, of which I'm assuming that's gonna be the next chapter as to where we actually go to that town. The place is positively crawling with people, isn't it? Careful, Flo. If you don't watch where you're going, you're likely to run right into someone. Oops, sorry. This is also new to me. I forgot to pay attention to where I was walking. Understandable. After all, it's quite a change of pace from London. Oh, Flo, are you sure? I'm excited. Just don't stand around gawking for too long, and we'll accidentally leave you behind. Wow, what's that? Oh, look, there's another one over there. Huh? Professor? Luke? Where'd you two go? Oh. Eee! Oh no! Professor Thrall's gone! How? Oh dear, Muslim got separated in the combat there. Let's choose our steps. It's going to be awfully hard to find him with all those people around. Now, where could that girl have gone off to? Phew! What? Thrall, where did you run off to? Sorry, there were certain people that I must have lost you. Took a look at something before I knew it, you two were gone. But I believe you have found your way back to us. Why, what? what? We said even around, who knows when we might have found you again. I'll be more careful from now on, I promise. Hey, you know, I caught wind of something very interesting while I was running around back there. Oh? What did you hear? That a man named Romy was asking around after the Elysian box. If we track him down, maybe we can tell something we don't know. I heard from one person that he's been wandering around near the station. That is, that is interesting news. Let's head to the station and see if we can find Romy. Where do floor? That's some top notch intelligence you gathered out there. Hehe, <laughs> oh, it was nothing. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 we, 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 we skipped a couple steps there. So, so she got separated, she was kidnapped, and then immediately let go, and she doesn't know about it? Huh? I, I, I don't, I don't, hmm. Okay. Well, um, that's certainly interesting. Uh, okay, you know, you've been sitting there back in the wild. Can we actually talk to you? Oh, we can. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Gosh, I just can't decide. Oh, hi there. Do you uh, need something or something? We are currently in search of an item in the Legion Box. Does that name ring any bits? The Legion Box? Nope, never heard of it. But I do know a great puzzle about a box. Check it out. Number 46, Odd Shape Out. You have a box as shown below. Using the white cubes as standard units, the box is two cubes wide by three cubes long by, uh, by two cubes tall. Call tall. Two white cubes are permanently attached to the floor of the box. Now, out of the four shapes, A through D shown below, three of them can be placed together in the box filled to the top with no gaps. Find and circle the shape that doesn't fit into the box using the condition described above. Okay, so this, I think I've already solved it because this shape lines up perfectly with this shape, and then this shape connects together with this shape. Uh, I said this shape to form a square like so which can go on top like right there and this just doesn't fit anywhere so I'm gonna go with D this should do the trick yep so there we have it. most of these most of the puzzles episode have been really really simple but there's been a couple like oh go around there go around the thing counterclockwise six billion times which are just ugh. okay nice and easy 
Holy moly, you must be some kind of puzzle genius. Oh, right, what did you want to know again? I was wondering if you might know anything about the DG box. Let's see, let's see. Nope, no clue at all. How about you? I try asking someone else. Uh, we've been trying to ask other people. I see. Well, that was useless. Okay, great. Uh, uh, we gotta head to, I guess we'll just, the train station's behind us, but I, I kinda, I kinda wanna keep exploring. Oh. You're, you're new around here. You weren't here before. Hey there, good seeing you again. Tell me, how's the festival treating you? Make sure you enjoy it all you can, eh? Truth is, I'd like to be out there. We'll open up with you, boy. I got packages to deliver. Except as far from here, so I've given you a few hints. I bet you can figure out where it is. Number 45, which house where? The lower house is A, B, C, D, uh, each of which is a different color. Decipher each house's color from the following clues. The red house is closer to the pine tree than the blue house. The yellow house is closer to the lake than the green house. The green house is closer to the power lines than the blue house. D is either yellow, blue, or green. Okay. Well, that makes things considerably easier, so we know it's... Uh, okay, so based on the information, we know for sure that it's not the red house. Uh, okay, so these are the yellow, blue, or green. The green house is closer to the power lines than the blue house, so... That means that the green house is probably gonna be here. Uh, the yellow house is closer to the lake than the green house. Well, assuming the green house is in A, then that could be E, that could be li that could literally be B, C, or D. The yellow house is- and then the red house is closer to the pine tree than the blue house. Okay. So by that logic... Okay, I think I got it. So, uh, close to the pine tree in the blue house, that puts the red, that puts red either here or here. Uh, and since we know for sure that D isn't red, that means that D has to be yellow, blue, or green. So that puts C. So C is red, uh, leaving B and D. Uh, which and then the only two options left are blue and yellow. And yellow is closer to the lake than the greenhouse, and if the greenhouse is up here. Then that means the blue has to be here, and then yellow is here. Okay, so, uh, okay, so let's just change the colors to match up what we said. Like uh, so. This should do the trick. Another win in the bag. Correct. Two gentlemen leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right. This is one of the puzzles where you need to use the given conditions to deduce the answer. Yeah, that's the house. Now I better get moving. The rest for the mail carrier and all that. Puzzle thirty-five. Which house where is now in your puzzle index? Okay. Do you have anything new to say to us? Yes, you do. You have another puzzle. I must admit, I was kind of skeptical at first, but you really know how to communicate with those cows. Everyone's been busting their buns to get drops from ready for the fest today's festivities. Uh, thank goodness you saved today. It would have been a mess if that spat back there ruined the, ruined the celebration. Yep, everyone's been working like crazy. See that flag over there? Made yesterday. I put it up, and while I worked, I thought up a puzzle. You want to hear it, right? Uh, I guess we're going to hear it. Not that I particularly asked, but we're going to hear it anyway. You have a pristine white flag that you want to color into three sections. As shown below, you have three paints. No two adjacent sections of the flag can be the same color. Each section can only be one color, and you can't change the number or size of these sections. If you aren't allowed to mix paint, how many distinct flag designs are possible? Uh, okay. So it clarifies that we're not allowed to mix paint, but it doesn't say whether or not we are allowed to leave a section blank. If we're allowed to leave a section blank, then... That means we have to multiply something by four, because we have four color options. Uh, and, okay, so, so for each, uh, for each letter, okay, so, uh, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll just do B for now, so, or, or I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll do A for now. So, actually, in my head, I think it's gonna be nine, because each, uh, each letter matches up with, with another one, one, so we'll do B, A, B, C, B, D. And then the other ones would be C A C B C D, uh, and then D B, or sorry, D A D B D C. So that's a total of nine for each individual letter. So then that means nine times four equals thirty-six. Assuming we are allowed, we're allowed to use to not to leave a a blank slot on the flag as a as a color option. Am I correct? Hmm. Let's see if this works. Yes, I am. Okay. Piece correct. Sharp thinking, once you incorporate the white color of the unpainted flag into your designs, you actually have four colors you can work with. If you assign a color to the left third of the flag and list all designs possible, you get a total of nine variations. Yep, that's that's what, that's what we just described. Pretty good, right? I may be getting older, but I can still cut up a mean puzzle. Yes, yes you can. That, that was good, that was a nice puzzle. Okay, now it's time to actually head back, uh, unless, I mean, I, I'll keep exploring, because the, no one, okay, there's no one over here. I thought that might, I thought, thought that might have been something new and interesting. I guess we'll, actually, I guess I'll talk to you anyway. Ah, you do have a new puzzle for us. Oh, hello there, you two. You sure have excellent timing. So I'm trying to wrap these flowers I gave to a new friend. 
I got a green thumb when it comes to plants, and I'm all thumbs when it comes to rapping. How about I'll go out, would you? Puzzle number 32, it's a wrap. <laughs> Funny, because it's wrapping. <laughs> yeah, so I, I figured if the people on the left had new puzzles for us, then the, then the person on the right probably had a puzzle for us as well. In order to wrap the flower just like the leftmost drawing, how should you begin your wrapping? Tap A, B, C, or D to answer. Uh... Well, it can't be A or D, because then you wouldn't be able to see this part of the thing, which is in clear view here. So it, it's not A and it's not D. So that now it's either B or C. And it's gotta be C because the direction uh, because the way the way this is coiled, it'll end up looking like that. It, like if, if I twist the paper around in that direction, that's it, it'll wrap around itself and end up like that. So it's gonna it, it's hard for me to visually this demonstrate the trick. with just a 2D drawing program because I can't like I can't physically huh. rotate it around, Wonderful. but the, if you, you just imagine a piece of paper and wrap it in that direction, it, it'll end up like that, okay. Uh, so that was... Uh, that's nice and simple. Well, that's about the finest wrapping job I've ever seen. You sure say me a heap of trouble. Oh, we got a new hamster toy. Nice. Let me return the favor with a couple tidbits I found that tea set I gave you. I'm sure you know the basic brewing, yes, putting in one scoop each to the three ingredients again, you makes a lovely bell classic tea. However, there's a lot of room for experimenting. For example, try brewing two parts brisky berry with so one part something else. Get it right, and it'll make a sweet, crisp tea that's just wonderful. If you, and if you happen to pick up more tea ingredients, try, you can try creating some infusions of your own. There's a whole world of complex flavors waiting to be discovered. You just need to find them. Okay, great. Is that... I feel like we've explored every nook and cranny of this town. Because I, cause I don't want it, to... It's, it's not like... This isn't like the first game, it doesn't seem like, where it's just one village that you can explore whenever you want. Um, so I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I want to make sure I've explored everything I possibly can before moving on. So is this... What, what do we have left to... We have Path of the Farm, we've already explored this place. Uh... Composition field... I, I, I want to make sure I don't leave any stone unturned. Uh, so let's, let's just check everything. Farm entrance... Dropstone pond... I already talked to the guy about his fishing problems. I didn't talk to you, I haven't talked to you yet. Do you have a... You, okay, you do have a puzzle for us. Um, there's nothing this fellow here fell asleep standing up. Judging by his uniform, he must be a security guard. I wonder how his employer feels about his nap. Please inform me that I never saw the puzzle before. Puzzle number 44, Tangled Ropes. Okay, yeah, so I, uh... I, I want to make sure that we clear out the whole village before we move on, because I'm guessing going the transition will be the bookend of the chapter, and then we'll move on to the next town. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing we can't go back and forth between towns, so I, I want to make sure we clear this out entirely before moving on. Three rope loops are tangled together with a single red rope. If you were to pull both ends of the red rope, a single knot would form in the middle. Can you figure out how many of the rope loops would get caught in this knot when it forms? Remember, even if a loop appears to have been pulled into the knot, you shouldn't count on your answer if you can pull the loop free of the red rope with a tug. Okay. So in that case... None of them. Because they're... The rope doesn't look like it runs through anything, it just... It, 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 it's just gonna fall through. It, it's just gonna fall right through the the thing uh, when you pull it. It's it's not tangled around anything. It just runs to through. It. You, you pull it taut, it's just gonna fall off. Yeah, that's huh. wonderful. Another one of those trick questions. Yeah, exactly. Good thinking. Not a single loop will become truly entangled in the knot that forms when you pull the red rope in a form of knot. One loop will fall away. The other two will hang from the red rope free of the knot. Correct answer confirmed. Well done. Sir. That's some kind of mad puzzle genius to be able to talk about them in his sleep. <laughs> Great. Okay. Is that everything? I feel like at this point we've explored every single possible nook and cranny of this town, so I guess it's time to... Well, let's head out now. Let's... let's I, I might have missed something, like tapping on a random object might give me a, a, a puzzle, but I don't... As far as people we can talk to, I think we've cleared out as much as we can, so let's head out. Uh... Oh, Miss Lady, have a moment. Certainly. How may they have assistance? Seems you've done a great deal of investigating today. Tell me, during the course of your inquiry, you didn't hear anything about my daughter, did you? Nope. Mm -mm, nope, nothing at all. Your daughter, sir? Yes, Katia. You see, she hardly ever comes home since her grandmother, Sophia, passed away. Sophia and my daughter were very close, and Sophia's death came as a great shock to Katia. If you see her, would you please tell her her father wishes she'd come home? If you're a fine gentleman such as just deliver the message, she just might listen. Unfortunately, our tree is leaving soon, so I may not be able to help much at all. Katia is my, no, our only child. She means everything to me, and I'd be forever in your debt if you could help me. I wonder what this kind of lady is all about. I guess it's as good as mine. Judging by her family and breeding, I guess she's both beautiful and refined. 
Plus, I can hold yourself. All right, let's head out. Oh, Mr. Holland, moment. could you could that man over there be Romy? Guess we have to talk to Romy. I heard that you've been inquiring about the monument of an antique military Elysian box. But yeah, I think folks say that freaky mouse kills whoever manages to pry into the building. I found out about it during my course and my travels, but that box is really what I'm after. But then if I may be so rude to ask, what are you looking for, sir? A phantom town that's nowhere to be found on any map. A place I'll ever chosen to visit. The only way in, I hear, is on the military express. That train and its many mysteries have been the subject of my research for years. From what I can tell, this artifact you're after, this Elysian box, is also tied to that town. Oh, so when can we set out for it? How do we get there? Yeah, that's the detail I haven't pinned down yet. Maybe you whisper a word while inside the train, and then whoosh, the track goes in a new direction. Yeah, it's probably something like that. I'll just have to keep searching until I find a way in. Interesting, thank you for your time. Professor, did you hear that? I think you're finding a new little lady in box. It's better to celebrate, but it looks like our journey on the road to the express isn't over yet. Alright, you two, let's stop making our way back to the station. Okay, Professor. Alright, let's get back on the train. I said get back on the train. I guess when I get back on the train, I have to talk to you to get on the train. Yo, you got at least 30 puzzles in your belt. Nice going, bro. But if you want a challenge worthy of a real rock star, give me a holler. Is that a, is that a request to talk to you again? That's special treatment, dudes. Pretty righteous, huh? Train isn't really to move quite yet, so while you're waiting, I'll lay a sweet puzzle on you. Puzzle 55, Sammy's Necklace. Sammy has eight chains with seven links each. He wants to connect all these chains together to make a totally awesome necklace as a single loop. The jeweler says he can open and close a, link, a single link for two dollars. As shown below, Sammy could open an end of each of the eight chains to make one long necklace as a single loop. However, that, that would cost sixty dollars, and the truth is there's a cheaper way to get the same results. Using the cheapest method possible, how much will it cost to make Sammy's necklace? Okay. Well, this, this is a bit of an exploit. But... If you want to be really cheap about this... There's seven links per chain, right? Well, if you if you break apart a single one of these, then you would only need seven links to take each of the individual links and link the rest of these together, like so. It's it's a cheap way to do it, but you're asking for cheap, and then that'll that'll save you about two bucks for one single link. Consider this puzzle solved. So. Not that much money saved, but, you know, no still two bucks unsolved. saved. So, that's that, I guess. Alright, that... That was the hardest one you got, huh? Monte Express is back in this, baby. Get ready to ride, folks. Hey, you guys better hurry back to your seats, because this train's ready to rock! Oh, wow, we missed a lot of puzzles. I, th I thought we were pretty thorough. I was fairly sure we checked every square inch of that town, but I guess... Oh, Jesus Christ, how many did we miss?! Thank you so much. <sighs> hmm? What's going on over there? I believe we may have stumbled upon Mr. Anderson's dear daughter. That's one heck of a send-off. Considering the size of the party, I doubt she's just going on holiday. How could I have possibly missed that many puzzles? I checked every square inch of the town! Okay. I, I guess I, I guess I suck then. I guess I just suck at finding puzzles. Great. That was a long chapter, by the way. Alright, well, that's it for now. Uh, th th that was good. Long, but good. Just some simple puzzle solving around town. Good puzzle, or good chapter. That'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. Catch you all tomorrow for some more Professor Linton Diabolical Box. Goodbye.